Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we're here to talk about some more Devil Fruit related business, except this time I care a lot less about the fruits themselves, and we will be focusing on their users. Now I want to say from the outset that having a good Devil Fruit does not make an individual a good Devil Fruit user, and vice versa. A good user doth not necessarily make a good fruit. They're just capable of making the absolute most of what they've got. And it's that latter category that we're really focused on here. Exactly what have people been able to accomplish with the powers they've been granted? Oh, and one more thing. I just want to note that this is not the strongest Devil Fruits list or even the strongest Devil Fruits users list. And I urge you all at the outset not to confuse strength with amazing fruit usage. With that said, the criteria for this list is as follows. The Devil Fruit users here must have gone above and beyond any initial expectations of their powers, demonstrating superior thought when it comes to applying their powers to a wide variety of situations, as well as the ability to evolve. Furthermore, all Devil Fruit users on this list must be canon because let's be real, outside of maybe Tesoro, there wouldn't be any other candidates anyway. But with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to the top five Devil Fruit users in One Piece. Number five, Caesar Clown. Commencing this list, we have a deranged clown with a Logia fruit known as the Gasu Gasunumi. But the thing about this fruit is that we as an audience are not exactly sure how the basic fruit functions outside of giving the user the ability to conjure, manipulate, and become gas. And this is because our budget Joker has used his wealth of chemical knowledge to augment the fruit and added many of its offensive abilities. Exactly how he was capable of this, eh, who knows? But there is no denying that as a result, Caesar became quite a force to be reckoned with. Caesar's primary forms of attacking generally involve conjuring poisonous gas, which we can assume was not an ability of the base fruit. And allegedly even breathing in a small portion of this gas will lead to certain death. If that wasn't enough, Caesar can also absorb even more powerful poisonous gases crafted by himself to become significantly more deadly. And in theory, with this scientific prowess, there really is no limit to what Caesar could become if left unchecked. But Caesar does have some more versatile uses of his fruit, developing an ability to craft a gas sword, as well as shoot lit gas from his mouth, sort of like a freaking laser beam, and even cause gigantic explosions with simple castanets. Caesar really has gone above Above and beyond in terms of the Gasu Gasunumi, and as such, he serves as the opening spot on this list. Number four, Doflamingo. As the wielder of the Ito Ito no Mi, Doflamingo possesses the ability to create and manipulate strings. Yay, strings. Well, near indestructible and razor sharp strings, I should add, which is phenomenal on its own, but the heavenly demon really took this whole string business to the extreme, which is put on display with his parasite technique, whereby he becomes a literal puppet master by attaching strings to various unfortunate victims. And not only that, but Doflamingo possesses such a mastery of the fruit that he is even able to control mass quantities of people at any given time with seemingly little effort. But this man's maddening use of the Ito Ito no Mi certainly does not end there, as Doflamingo is capable of crafting a clone of himself entirely out of string with proper coloring and everything. And in terms of utility, he can also use the fruit to more or less Spider-Man his way throughout the world by attaching strings to clouds, as well as using strings that can be used to temporarily heal injuries, including his own internal organs. Then there's the whole crafting a gigantable, <laughs> gigantable, hmm. I've created a new word. Then there's the whole creating a giant indestructible bird cage that traps and brutally slaughters anyone caught in it. And of course, with all of this in mind, is it really any surprise that Doflamingo has also pushed his devil fruit to the point of becoming an awakened Paramecia user? This guy really has extracted close to the maximum potential from his devil fruit. And as a result, he's considered so powerful that he was wrapped in sea stone shackles because the Marines did not trust that sea stone handcuffs would be enough to stop him. Truly one of the finest devil fruit users we have seen in the series thus far. Number three, Charlotte Katakuri. Moving along, we have the only known special Paramecia user in the series at the time of this recording. And whilst we still don't know the exact definition of a special Paramecia, Katakuri certainly puts its potential on full display. Now his devil fruit is the Mochi Mochi no Mi, and its primary use as seen in the series works very much in conjunction with Katakuri's advanced observation Haki, which allows him to mimic the properties of a Logia fruit. Basically, Katakuri sees briefly into the future, and then he is able to mold his Mochi body to avoid whatever attacks may be about to strike him. These attacks could be simple like punches, but Katakuri's mastery extends to the point where he can even dodge bullets by very selectively morphing parts of his mochi body. And I'd like to note that minuscule manipulation like that is absolutely insane and shows incredible control of his devil fruit, the likes of which I'm not sure we've ever seen elsewhere in the series. But Katakuri also possesses a swath of crazy other abilities such as Chikara Mochi, where he spawns two giant mochi arms and manipulates them with his own hands in combat. And this just is not a technique that would be possible with a lesser user of the fruit because you really do need to possess an incredibly acute awareness of your fruit as well as your surroundings to make it work. Plus, of course, Katakuri has also awakened the Mochi Mochi no Mi and is able to turn his environment into thick, sticky stuff. Well and truly earning his spot on this list. Number two, 
Tony, Tony Chopper. All right, so a lot of you may not have been expecting this, but hear me out. Chopper possesses one of the most average fruits in the entire series, the Hito Hito no Mi, which grants its user the ability to turn into a regular human. I mean, yes, it did give Chopper human intelligence and thank God and L for that, because what he has been able to do with this devil fruit is nothing short of stunning. Like Caesar, Chopper figured out a way to augment his fruit abilities through the wonderful world of science, allowing him to develop the Rumble Balls, a drug that allows him superior control of his body to the point where he can access transfer outside of the standard three zone forms, all of which cater to his particular needs in any given situation. One example of which is Arm Point that focuses on combining reindeer and human DNA to the point of maximum strength focused purely in the arms. And as the series has gone on, Chopper has developed many, many, many more transformations. And in the New World era, Chopper doesn't even need the Rumble Balls to access them, incorporating many of them into his basic Zoan arsenal. But Chopper even pushed his Devil Fruit so far that he accidentally discovered Monster Point, which yeah, look, it has never been officially referred to as an awakening, but it almost certainly is given what we know of Awakened Zoans in the series. So that's right, through the sheer power of science and determination, Chopper became the first straw hat to awaken their devil fruit, and that was during the pre-time skip era. And I mean, post-time skip, he can even control his awakened form, which is incredibly impressive. So yeah, Chopper may not be one of the strongest or smartest characters in the series by a long, long margin, but he has most certainly pushed his devil fruit to its limits. And what he's achieved from such a simple fruit is astounding. So much so that it was very tempting to crown him the champion of this list. However, it's very difficult to deny. Number one, Monkey D. Luffy. This one was probably quite predictable, but how could it have been anyone else? Luffy is a character that we have been closely following for over two decades now, and he is still consistently innovating his devil fruit. And I like to take this opportunity to point out that the Gomu Gomu no Mi is a pretty mediocre fruit when you isolate it. When Luffy first ate it, it was borderline useless, and it took him 10 years of strength training to get to the point where it could be applied usefully in combat. But Luffy certainly did not stop there. And throughout his journey in the series, he has continued to push the Gomu Gomu no Mi, eventually developing gear second, third, and fourth. Forth, allowing him to rise to the challenge of opponents whose abilities completely outclass his on paper. And the really great thing is that Luffy doesn't have the advantage of being granted an incredibly powerful or special fruit from the get-go, nor does he have the academic knowledge to augment himself in any way. Luffy has been able to accomplish his versatility of the fruit through pure drive alone, unlocking a world of creativity that many of us could only dream of. And that is why there is no doubt in my mind that Monkey D. Luffy is the best devil fruit user that One Piece has to offer. But that pretty much does it for the top five best devil fruit users in One Piece. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items with the proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your own favorite devil fruit users in the series. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.